My topic today is regional air quality control strategy, challenges and opportunities. The basic principle of air quality controls are quite straightforward. By reducing the emission amount and improving dispersion, we could reduce the air pollution levels. However, in reality, many difficulties would arise that may prevent us from implementing the pollution control measures. I would like to focus on three challenges commonly encountered when we prepare the air quality management plan. They are the scale of the problem, local limitations, and the complexity of the problem. Air pollution has no boundary. It is a global issue. Asia Pacific region is one of the hot heat area with high PM2.5 pollution levels. We need to recognize that the sheer scale of the air pollution problem could only be tackled by regional collaborations. Taking the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay area as an example, this area has 11 cities with a total area of 56,000 kilometers, a total population of over 70 million people, with a GDP of 1.6 trillion US dollar in 2019. The size of the population is even larger than the United Kingdom, and the output of GDP is almost three times of that of the San Francisco Bay. It is no doubt that the human and industrial activity within this area will generate enormous amount of emissions, and which is difficult to be dispersed in the limited land area. Sharing the same air share, Hong Kong and Guangdong have a common interest in air quality. Both governments were aware of difficulties in tackling, in tackling the air pollution problem and start collaborations more than 20 years ago. A joint working group on sustainable development and environmental protection was established in 1999. This provided a robust collaboration framework and operation mechanism for improving the regional air quality. A regional air quality monitoring network was established in 2005 under the Regional Air Quality Monitoring uh, Management Plan. This is the first network in China that is representative of a region and in line with international practices. The network is currently made up of 23 stations covering both urban as well as rural area within GBA. It is operated and managed by the three governments within GBA and the monitor will provide real-time air quality information to the public. The Joint Working Group also set out clear emission reduction targets and timeline for the region. This provides sufficient time and clear roadmap for both governments to formulate and execute appropriate emission control policies. The concerted effort had led to continuous improvement in regional air quality. Compared with 2006, the annual average concentrations of uh, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and PM10 level has been reduced by 29%, 84%, and 37%, respectively. This shows clear downward trend for major pollution except ozone. A team from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology combined the satellite remote sensing information with ground-level monitoring data to estimate the spatial PM2.5 distribution in GBA over the years. It shows that the worst PM2.5 impact happened in around 2007. Since then, the PM2.5 concentration has been reducing over the years. Local limitations also constrain our air quality management plan. The city of Hong Kong is covered by many high-rise buildings and connected by a web of narrow roads. Traffic congestion is a common scene in rush hours. Although we could not change the city morphology overnight, it is possible to formulate effective control measures based on scientific evidence. Let us look at some of the monitoring station data in 2019. Tamun is an island 
in the eastern side of Hong Kong rural area. It is located far away from major emission sources and is an ideal background monitoring location for Hong Kong as well as for GBA. Comparing the nitrogen dioxide data recorded at Tatmoon with those obtained in the rural area, we could see that most of the nitrogen dioxide is emitted from local sources. The much higher nitrogen dioxide level recorded at roadside indicates that the vehicle emission is the major sources in the city area. However, if we conduct similar analysis on PM2.5 data, the conclusion is quite different from the nitrogen dioxide analysis. The PM2.5 concentration recorded at Tap Moon, our background station, is only slightly lower than that recorded in the urban area. The differences in PM2.5 concentration between the roadside and the general stations were not as high as observed in the nitrogen dioxide analysis. It is clear that the majority of the PM2.5 pollutions were originated from sources outside of Hong Kong. The Hong Kong government implemented a series of control measures to reduce vehicle emissions. Despite of the continuous growth in vehicle population, we have been successfully reducing the nitrogen oxide levels at roadsides for the past 20 years. However, the nitrogen dioxide concentrations at some generations uh, stations also start uh, meeting the Hong Kong air quality standard of 40 microgram in the past three years. Although the improvement at roadside nitrogen dioxide level was not obvious before 2013, the diesel commercial vehicle replacement program introduced in 2014, aiming at taking out more than 80,000 uh, P Euro 4 standard vehicles from the street, successfully reduced the roadside nitrogen dioxide level below 80 microgram in the last few years. The $1.2 billion that we spend on this program is definitely bearing fruit. Based on the monitoring station in the past 20 years, we note that there is a nonlinear uh, relationship between the annual NO2 concentration and the annual, annual, annual NOx concentration. If we want to reduce the roadside annual nitrogen dioxide concentration from the current level of around 80 micrograms to the Hong Kong air quality standard of 40 micrograms, the roadside nitrogen oxide level has to be further reduced by 60%. We could use this as a yardstick to plan for future vehicle emission control policy. The tightening of fuel standard has resulted in more than 70% reduction in sulfur dioxide concentration in the past 20 years. The gap in PM2.5 concentration between roadside and general station has also been reduced from 21 micrograms to 6 micrograms. This indicates that the vehicle emission control measures introduced in the past 20 years has successfully reduced the PM2.5 emissions from vehicles. Although we have been successful in reducing the concentration of several major uh, air pollutants, the ozone data recorded at the Tapmoon station show that the ozone is still on a rising trend. Due to the titration effect of nitrogen oxide, the ozone levels recorded in the urban areas and at the road size are less than that recorded at Tapmoon. The continuous reductions of nitrogen oxide emission in the urban area also led to increasing trend in the city and the roadside areas. The great number of VOC components and the variety of their emission sources posed a grand challenge to our air quality management plan. On top of the high background ozone concentration in GBA, the short-term eight hours ozone level concentration also exceed our air quality standards occasionally under weather conditions that is unfavorable for pollution dispersion within the GBA. We also know that high ozone events bring along high PM events as well, 
under secondary formation mechanism. In order to tackle the ozone problem, both Hong Kong and Guangdong government turned to scientists to seek better understanding of the ozone formation characteristics in GBA. We constructed super sites to house advanced air quality monitoring equipment for scientific studies. We have tested out real-time VOC monitoring in the past few years and will incorporate this monitoring work in the regional air quality monitoring network from next year onward. Guangdong, Hong Kong and uh, Macau government agreed last year to jointly conduct a large-scale ozone study within GBA in the next three years. Large-scale measurement campaign will be conducted once every year during the study period. This means that we will conduct three campaigns in a row. Grid-based sampling at around 80 grids or locations covering the whole GBA will provide information about the spatial as well as temporal distributions of this pollution in GBA. Airborne sampling using helicopter will be conducted to collect samples in Hong Kong's airspace. We have done one trial fly this summer to test out the equipment and logistics. We will also conduct monitoring work in the water areas by deploying a vessel equipped with air quality monitoring uh, equipment to the sea. Trial sampling work during one of the high ozone episodes showed that the ozone level in the water area was even higher than that recorded in land-based monitoring uh, station. I would like to conclude my presentation with one statement. Every challenge gives rise to an opportunity. The three governments in the GBA area will make every effort and join forces to tackle the, ozone, the regional ozone problem with scientific support and effective emission control policy. Thank you.